I'm Shen. And I'm Katie. And we're with the Santa Barbara Middle School and Teen Press. Most of the film was close-up shots on faces, but I especially like the shots that were kind of among friends, like of all of them. So how did you decide to mix those two? Um, you know, well, we film with two cameras, and so, you know, we try to, we try to cover as much of the space as we can with the two cameras, but, you know, I think uh, these guys are very funny. They're very funny. Um, sometimes a little vulgar. I hope that uh, your audience uh, gets permission to hear some of the words they say. But no, I mean, really, I, they uh, they deserve close-ups. I think would be would be my answer to that. I mean, that's a tough call. That's a man. That's a late night of editing for a long period of time to figure out an answer to that question. I don't know. I don't know. Do you edit? Uh, not. No, not really. No, you should. <laughs> Well, I really liked how Sam was professional and reckless. Uh, why did you make it that way? You know, the, the, the great part about the way this film was made is these guys were trying to pass this test. And I really, truly, I said this a lot, this is the hardest test you've never heard of, ever. And so, the thing that's fun about this is this is my first film, my first feature length film. And so, they were kind of rooting for me to finish this thing and I was rooting for all of them to pass. It, um, when you make a documentary and you try to become a master sommelier, there are two, two goals that are very impossible to get. Some people get to, get to accomplish it and we kind of did that together and there's no way to do it but reckless. It's the only way to do it, you know? I love the shots in the film about... Did you guys, the, were you in the theater? Yeah, we watched you it. You were? Uh-huh. Okay, go on, okay. okay. <laughs> Right, um, well, I love the shots of when with the with the glasses blowing up. So, did you? What was the idea for that? How did you get the idea for that? You know, in, in making the film, we knew we needed some kind of way to separate different scenes and also create like a countdown. So, as the test got closer and closer and closer, we knew that there needed to be more of a stressful situation happening. And the way we, I, I always wanted to use this special high-speed camera, always. Ever since I started making films, I said, I, I want to use this camera. And at the beginning of this film, I wanted, to, I wanted to find a way to use blowing up glasses as cutscenes. And so we decided to make the glasses blow up more violently and more violently as, as it went on. And so that's kind of why we decided to do that. I mean, just to convey the amount of time that passes and sort of slow down time as well. When you weren't working on the film, how did you cleanse your palate? And I wasn't working on the film, how did I cleanse my palate? I will say that uh, during the process of the film, I drank a lot of wine. You know, not, not too much wine, but a lot of wine. I, my wife probably made me drink anything else but wine. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I'm a big fan of grapefruit juice. That's my, that's my thing, I love grapefruit juice. So that'd be my answer. Yeah. We never really knew why they wanted to become uh, master sommeliers. Did you plan it that way? Did I plan them becoming Master Sommeliers? Or did you plan us not knowing why they truly wanted to become Master Sommeliers? Well, you know, the, the, the these guys, I mean, these guys, the, the reasons they wanted to be Master Sommeliers was a very, very wide, a very wide amount of reasons. I mean, some of them were personal, some of them were professional. I mean, I tried in the film to, to, to tell as much as I could about why, but... I'm not sure. What do you mean? Uh, that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, there's. This is a very deep. This this test is one you commit to for. Jeez, I would say if you if you take the master sommelier exam, and you don't plan on spending years and years and years trying to do it, you're probably not going to do it. So these guys. By the time they finally do it, if they do it, I think sometimes they don't remember why they wanted to do it. So. Yeah. So there's this diploma called the Master Sommelier Diploma. I've got to know every single one on the planet. I don't sleep, I don't cut my hair, I don't shave. Falling apart here. <clears throat> Nothing else in my life has uh, been this difficult. Well, nobody ever said that anything that you worked hard for was going to be easy. I cried when my parents died. I cried when my children were, uh, were born. The only other time outside of that that I cried was when I passed this exam. Well, you liked the movie? It was really good, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, let, me, let me 
ask you a question. Okay. So how old are you? I'm 12. You're 12. So you're 12 and you've got nine years before you're legally allowed to have a glass of wine. What did you get out of the film? Um, I think that the fact that they had to like dedicate themselves so hard to the work and study so much because you know we have to study for tests and things like that. Yeah. So we could kind of relate to relate to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a goal in mind yourself personally that's that's on the level of what these kind of guys these guys were doing? Definitely not on the sa on the same level as them. Yeah. But but they're like you know when I'm older I have like ideas of what I what I want to do and stuff. Okay, that's very cool. All right, what's your question? I'm sorry. All right, well it's kind of it kind of goes along with that. So what do you hope that people take away from the film? You know, I think the thing with me is that ambition is contagious. I mean, for me it was no matter how hard the film got to make and how broke I was while we were making it and all this other stuff, these guys wanted this goal so bad. They wanted the pass so bad. And I want people to be inspired by this. I mean, I think that's the major thing. It's uh, it's very inspiring for us, who made, the guys who made the film, guys and girls. We uh, are very proud of the people, not just the guys who passed, but the people who actually just, just tried it. There's a lot of honor in doing this. And I hope people are inspired. I mean, very few people try for such a hard thing to do. It's like trying for the Olympics or trying to get into Harvard or something really hard. And I mean, it. It's very inspiring. I hope people are inspired. I really do. Ken Burns says that a lot of his best shots end up on the cutting room floor and not in the movie. What were some shots of some that you spit out? There's a scene in the film that it was in an early cut. I think it, it still keeps me up at night. I cut it out. You guys, I've never told anybody this. Um, after Brian and well, after the results, how do I say this without spoiling the film? After the results of the film, um, two of the characters end up having to judge another one of the characters at a different competition. And it is a very hard scene to watch because it's kind of gut-wrenching. and But it didn't fit. It just didn't fit. And that happens a lot when you edit documentaries or when you write a screenplay and a scene is great, but it doesn't fit in the overall story. And this one had to go, but on the DVD it will be there. And it's a phenomenal scene. It's it's one of the best shot scenes in the movie, and, and my director of photography did a great job. So th that was one. The other one was, you know, we filmed for a long period of time, and that wasn't the first time some of them had taken the test. And so there are other versions of that earlier on that are in it that had to be cut because it was hard to understand the test itself when they were all in it. And we wanted to make it a film that was understandable by a lot of people. So there's a lot of scenes. I mean, you film thousands of hours of footage. There's a lot in the cutting room floor. Ken Burns, though, he films like 20-hour films. So I can only imagine what he has on the cutting room floor. One of the great documentarians. What was one of your favorite memories from filming? One of my favorite memories from filming. I... Uh, I had an opportunity that you saw in the film to go to Germany and we filmed the oldest white wine in the world. It was during the history segment and it's a uh, Riesling from 17, I think 1735. And uh, it is in a cellar that was 600 years old, 700 years old and it was, a, it was a moment where I was totally present and realized the weight that was on our shoulders to tell the story right. I mean wine is, uh, we have a responsibility to a lot of people that have been making wine. Wine isn't just alcohol, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not just that. There's a lot of really important stories that go along with this, and Psalm's one of them. But that bottle of wine, holding that in my hands and tasting some really old wine like that, was a, was a, was a, dawn, was a very humbling experience, and that, that would be it. Well, we've been asking people if they would compare Psalm to a wine, how they would describe it. So how would you describe it? You know, I want Psalm to be accessible, so I would I would hope that Psalm would be a wine you could get at the grocery store, personally. You know, I I, I would hope that Psalm would be uh, something that most people could just go and buy and drink. You know, I, you know, we're in Santa Barbara, so hopefully maybe it would be like a nice Pinot that you could get a hold of. That would be my answer, because I want this film to be seen. I think it's a good story and it needs to be seen. You know, not some esoteric wine no one's ever heard of. Something people can get a hold of, you know? And they make non-alcoholic wines, by the way, that you guys can drink. I feel bad. I feel bad you guys can't drink wine. So. 
All right, thank you. No yeah, problem. Thank you. It was an honor. Appreciate it. Anything else? I got it. Are you sure? Yeah. So why don't you tell me how to taste them? I mean.